While Brazil is likely far from the first nation you would think of when it comes to military vehicles, for a brief period of time, they were actually one of the largest exporters of arms on the planet. During this period, we saw many unique vehicles emerge from the South American nation, including some we have previously covered on this channel, such as the Osorio and the Tomoyo series of vehicles. However, these were far from the first design to be dreamt up by the minds of Brazilian engineers. For that, we need to travel over 20 years before the Osorio was as much as a glimmer in Njesa's eye. Stay tuned as we discuss the story of the Cuchilla, Brazil's first armored vehicle. <music> The information in today's video is provided by Blaze Killer, also known as Darren Hayes, who is an author for Tanks Encyclopedia and one of the founders of the recently posted La America Tech Tree proposal on the War Thunder forums. This tech tree fuses together the many Latin American nations to achieve as many unique vehicles or deep modernizations into a single tree with a varied playstyle. Among the vehicles in the tree are of course the various Osorio, X1s, and Tomoyos of Brazil, but also the Tam and Nahuel of Argentina, the 60mm HVMS armed vehicles of Chile, and the Venezuelan Antos known as the Maisanta. Personally, this is one of the trees I would most like to see added to the game, so hopefully this will help make that a reality. Please check out the link towards the proposal in the description to learn more about this tech tree. While it was far from the first time Brazil would make changes to an armored vehicle, the VETE T1A1 Cuchia would represent their first foray into domestic tank development rather than relying solely on foreign designs. This small, French-inspired, Alfa Romeo-infused, Brazilian Gambiara-fueled design would pave the way for the likes of the E9 Cascavel and the Tomoyo tanks. It proved to Brazil that its policy towards the local automotive industry was successful and ready to take on a more militaristic nature. Before the Cuchilla was developed, Brazil had almost always used foreign tanks for its armies, with the exception of improvised armored vehicles built on tractors during Brazil's many revolutions of the interbellum period. Throughout this long period, the Brazilian army was modernizing and more advanced engineering institutes were formed, which culminated in the creation of the Escola Tecnica do Exercito, or ETE, in 1933. It was with the ETE where the leap towards automotive design was to be made through the very first industrial and automotive course of the country in 1947. Some 11 years later in 1958, nine third-year students led by Major José Luis de Castro y Silva started designing a tank, or rather tanquette, concept design. The name of this vehicle was of course the extremely original VETE-58, standing for Viatura Escola Tecnica do Exercito de 1958, or Army Technical School Vehicle of 58. The vehicle was planned to be propelled by a four-cylinder boxer engine. The concept scale model was shown during an ETE exposition in early January, which also showed off a concept anti-tank missile based on the French SS-10 and SS-11, and a project to extract magnesium from seawater. The goal of the exposition seems to have been to show attempts of the Brazilian army to copy already existing techniques which were still relevant for their needs. Of course, the VETE-58 was no different and was heavily inspired by the French VP-90. The VP-90 was a vehicle designed by Victor Beaufort for the French army in 1952. At this time, French strategists saw use in a fast tankette and thus, Les Etablissements Fougueux de Béziers, which proposed the vehicle, delivered a prototype. A VP-90 armed with a 75mm recoilless rifle was also built, but by that time, interest in the VP-90 had been lost. Similarly to the VP-90, the VETE-58 was designed as a high-speed, low-profile reconnaissance vehicle, and after the presentation was further improved upon and received a new designation, VETE-T1 Cuchia, with Cuchia being the name of a rodent, and apparently the nickname of Major José Luis de Castro y Silva. Sadly, after this, the program would not continue until six years later. 
interest in the Cuccia resurfaced in 1965 for somewhat unknown reasons. It seems more requirements were present to request such a vehicle and the pro-automotive policies encouraged by the Brazilian president Juscelino Kubitschek in between 1956 and 1961 had matured enough to allow such projects. Additionally, in 1964, a military coup had taken place which was followed by a military dictatorship. It would therefore not be inconceivable for the military dictatorship to show support in starting local military vehicle development and they simply picked up the first concept they could find which could easily be turned into a functional vehicle. This seems to have been the VETE T1 Cuccia. The IME, or Instituto Militar de Ingenharia, which was formed after a merging of the ETE with the ITM in 1959, enlisted the help of eight companies in Brazil to further development and build a Cuccia prototype. The company FNM, Fabrica Nacional de Motores, would provide 90% of the prototype's manufacture, bringing in the engine, raw material, and labor for assembly. Additionally, the Navy Arsenal provided cast steel components, Petrobras supplied rubber for the road wheels, Volkswagen Brazil made the torsion bars, while the company Metalon provided the shock absorbers. SKF Brazil made the bearings, the steel company CSN would provide the steel plates and profiles, and Rio Motor provided technical assistance for the torsion bars. The prototype was built on July 13, 1965 and received the designation VETE T1A1 upon delivery to the Army. The Cuccia was shown to the public in 1966 and it would also be featured in the United States Army Military Review Volume 46 of July. In the Military Review Volume, the vehicle was said to be known as Cuccia while the official designation was VETE T1A1. What makes the Cuccia interesting over the previous improvised projects of Brazil was that FNM was planning to produce 100 Cuccias for the Brazilian army and intended to develop an APC version and a version with an armed turret as well. The Cuccia prototype itself also underwent some changes as it was first delivered without any armament and two vision slits in the hull. At some point, the right slit was closed up and eventually a 30 caliber machine gun was placed with a small vision slit cut above it. Considering the military review journal and marketing material of FNM show a Cuccia armed with a machine gun, it is likely these changes were done somewhere between July 1965 and 1966. The Cuccia was an open hull vehicle about 12 feet long, 6 feet wide, and 3.7 feet tall. 3.6 by 1.85 by 1.12 meters, respectively. It would carry two crew members laying down or four while sitting up and weighed three US tons or 2.7 metric tons. The vehicle was protected with armor which was meant to protect the crew against distant small arms fire and shrapnel. The driver was located on the front left steering the vehicle with two tiller bars. The machine gunner was located on the front right with his 30 caliber M1919 machine gun which had access to 10 boxes of ammunition for a total of 2500 rounds. The remaining two crew members could have had tasks like a radio operator, if they brought a portable radio that is, foot reconnaissance, or as a mobile hit and run ambush team considering the Cuccia was also armed with a 60mm M9 bazooka with 8 rockets available which could penetrate up to 3 inches or 75mm of steel. This was located on the left rear fender. The engine and fuel tanks were located in an enclosed steel box on the rear of the vehicle while the transmission was located in the front of the vehicle. This steel box would later receive a bronze plaque inscribed with the names of the students who designed the original VETE-58 concept. The engine and driver's panel is where the Alfa Romeo heritage comes in. FNM manufactured Alfa Romeo cars, including the luxury Alfa Romeo 2000, which was known as the FNM JK or as the FNM 2000 after 1964. The Cuccia used the four cylinder inline 1975cc and 95 horsepower gasoline engine from the FNM 2000 and its dashboard gauges. With this, the Cuccia could reach speeds of 50 miles per hour on roads and 30 miles per hour off-road, 80 and 50 kilometers an hour respectively, and had a 185 or 200 kilometer operational range. When it came time for the Brazilian army to test it though, the Cuccia had unsurprising results for a first attempt. 
The tracks were too narrow, meaning that the ground pressure was not sufficient, which led to the vehicle being prone to bogging down in muddy terrain. The armor was deemed insufficient, and the usage of gasoline as fuel made it vulnerable to catch fire. The open top configuration also meant that the crew would be vulnerable to Molotov cocktails or grenades as well. As a result, not only was the Kuchia rejected, but the notion of building national vehicles as well for the time being. It would take until 1967, when the United States was getting increasingly involved in Vietnam, that a study would point out that the extreme dependence on the United States for equipment could prove to be problematic for Brazil's capability in fighting long-term conflicts. This study would eventually lead to the Brazilian defense industry as we know it. The Cuchia's current whereabouts are unknown. It was preserved at the Rio de Janeiro Conde de Linhares Military Museum, but has since been removed from the collection for restoration for multiple years now. The Cuchia must be seen as what it was, a first attempt by an industry which had never developed and built an armored vehicle for serial production to be used by the army. The cooperation between the Brazilian army and the Brazilian automotive industry to create the Cuchia would prove fundamental in successful future projects of the Brazilian defense industry with the creation of vehicles like the Cascavel and Arutu, which all came from the humble beginnings of the Cuchia. So what do you think of this little Brazilian creation? Let me know down in the comments, and be sure to show your thanks to Blazekiller for helping me share its story with all of you. If you'd like to see Brazilian and other South American armor finally make its appearance in War Thunder, don't forget to check out the link and vote for their proposal. Huge thanks, as always, to my Conley fans for supporting my content, and to all of you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, consider checking out the previous one I did with Blaze Killer on the story of the Tomoyo tank program done by Brazil. Hope to see you there, or on my next video.